failure. I think failure is a really important part of uh, the process of, of achieving success. I mean, we're talking about my personal failures uh, on the road to becoming a creative entrepreneur in the publishing industry, whether that's from not getting into Oxford or not getting into art school or jobs that I applied for before getting into the publishing industry. Uh, what I want to do is inspire people to make failures enthusiastically and in so doing get to a point in their careers where they realise those failures happen for a reason. So. Yep, so our first speaker is Peter Collingridge from App Studio. Very pleased to have him here. He's going to tell you all the wonderful, successful bits of his career rolled into one. So big round of applause, please, for our first speaker, Peter Collingridge. We've got a 21-second countdown on here. So, Okay, I'm going to be talking to you about failure today. Um, when Dave asked me to do this, I knew that uh, I wanted to talk about failure because it's a really important part of anybody's career. And I think since then, we've had the failure of the banking system, which kind of makes my failures look rather like minor disappointments. But I would say that today, what I'm going to do is, is try and encourage you to fail enthusiastically and find success. My CV, I don't really consider myself to be a publisher, so it's slightly odd that I'm here. I've been on the outer fringes of the publishing industry for the last 12 years. The one thread that's run through that is my passion for books, but also technology, creativity, and ways of, of using the web to find new, audience, new readers for books. Um, how did I get here? Well, I failed to, to get everything that I wanted when I, when I was a lot younger. If you'd asked me when I graduated what I'd be doing, I wouldn't be living in Acton for a start. Um, <laughs> but I'm actually very happy doing beautiful things in my life. Um, the interesting thing about this map is that Harry Beck, the guy that designed it, did it speculatively. Uh, for London Underground, and he failed to get it seen. Ooh, failure. Uh, I, wanted to go to, I wanted to go to art school, I wanted to go to Oxford, and myself at doing linguistics language at nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning in Edinburgh, which wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but I realise now that literature was absolutely perfect for my career. I found about, found about film, economics, history, politics, and, and it just, I, particularly about music, writing about music. As any good literature student would, I wanted to go to Paris. I failed to get into Paris because I dropped French from my degree and ended up in Vienna. The only requirement for the University of Vienna was the ability to speak English, which I didn't fail at. So I spent all of my time um, listening to hip hop and Tricky, about whom I wrote my uh, thesis. I also finally got into my course and got in more into music, which is something else that I wanted to do. Uh, suffice to say, being a DJ in a scratch jazz hip hop band wasn't really compatible with working in publishing. Uh, so I gave that up as well and was really worse than a drummer in it. I still DJ at book fairs tonight at the Canongate Party, but that doesn't really count. What I really wanted to do was to be an ad exec. I, I thought that the glamour, creativity, wealth and recognition of the advertising industry was a perfect communion of my love for language and visual communications, but the fuckers wouldn't have me. Um, <laughs> the problem was I think that most of my postgraduate applications were dripping in post-Marxist and Jameson theory and they weren't having any of it whatsoever. <laughs> I applied for a load of jobs and didn't get any of them. I had no interest in publishing whatsoever. I ended up working in a cashmere outlet and thank fuck that I didn't get any of these jobs. I ended up at a DJ gig that I was doing meeting a girl who lived on a canal boat in Edinburgh. Turned out she was an editor at Canongate Books. She got me in for an interview to the company where I soon realised that I knew Jamie at the time. Um, Canongate was a very small outfit. Its most visible part of it was Rebel Inc., which published Irving Welsh. And as far as my parents were concerned, who were supporting me on the £10 a day that Canongate generous, generously paid me, it was, a, it was a smacky place publishing the odd pamphlet. But actually, Canongate taught me more than anything it could have done about being a maverick, having great ideas. One of the great ideas was the Pocket Canons, which was a brilliant, beautiful, and audacious repackaging of the Bible. It taught me the power of ideas and how you've just got to have the vision to get something through. The Pocket Cans were talking about the second coming of the Bible, the second coming of Canongate, the second coming of publishing, and if it, the second coming of Jamie, Jamie Bing, which sounds blasphemous, um, <laughs> which it wasn't. Talking of the second comings is also the source of my most embarrassing moment, which was going out for a drink with one of the members of the Canongate board, who told me that when I joined the company, I thought I was Jamie's amanuensis. I thought this meant that I was the second coming of Jamie Bing, until I looked it up in a dictionary and found out that it meant that I was effectively his gimp or stenographer. <laughs> 
epic, epic fail. <laughs> so I realized I wasn't going to be a publisher, I wasn't going to be a designer, I was effectively a glorified PA. Um, I got into the web and thought that maybe I could have business ideas. The managing director at Canongate taught me how to write a business plan. I wrote a business plan for making pop promos for books, which I submitted for a £25,000 Arts Council application. Luckily, that application um, got funded, yay! Uh, so I went and made a load of films about books which got seen by millions of people online, but the fundamental premise of the, of the concept fell through. It didn't make more people buy more books online. This failure made me absolutely resolute to bring commercial as well as creative success to every project that we worked on. There were other failures for me at Canningate at the time as well. I was buying books, and this book was a real book that I was very passionate about. Nobody else had read it. There was an awful jacket that came out of design meetings for it, and I really didn't want that jacket to be, to be on it. I, in the end, had to fight to get this American jacket on the front of it, and nobody was listening to me, so I kind of had a hissy fit and accepted a job at the web company that had been working on the Canningate website with me and, and left publishing. Left publishing to go to a dot-com company in the middle of the dot-com bubble. Um, <laughs> nice work. The company ended up going down the tubes as well. I learned a huge amount there. The, 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 the kind of management disappeared, and I was running production and new business, and it was very interesting about how to run a web company in a recession, which is what I'm currently doing at the moment, but it was very toxic. I set up Apt in 2005 to consult to the publishing industry. In 2007, James Bridle joined us. We've done some very successful things together. We've had a few minor fails, most of which relate around uh, losing pitches or some Twitter-based indiscretions in front of clients, which we shouldn't really go into. Um, but we've maintained our focus on passion and on creativity. In between the two of them, I, I nearly set, I got frustrated by all of my dot-com friends making loads of money and decided I was going to set up a, a get-rich-quick scheme. Failed to do that because I couldn't make the decision to join it with my mate who then went off and got a £250,000 a job a year, which made me very depressed while I was still in the publishing industry. What it did make me was absolutely decisive. And when Apple launched the App Store in July of last year, I knew that I, I saw an absolute vision that this was going to be how books were going to get sold in the future. You do enhanced books on the iPhone. And I set up a company with my A team of, of best people that I'd worked with. We're launching. Uh, iPhone books, enhanced editions in the summer of this year. I don't know if it's going to fa fail, but I've got a really good feeling about it not failing. So, like in this literature, enhanced edition kind of pulls together all of these different threads of my life. It's the logical conclusion of, of what I've been doing so far, but it's only because I've been a persistent, tenacious, and ambitious failure throughout the point of that. One thing that did happen is I got sent by the British Council on their publishing tour of India, where finally somebody gave a name to what I do, which was a publishing entrepreneur. Finally, to you guys, I would say, a lot of you at the beginning of your careers, I'd encourage you to see yourselves as an object in motion. Be wildly ambitious, take risks which teach you good things at somebody else's dollar whenever you can. And, and take this Beckett quotation to heart. Just maintain what you're doing with passion, integrity and quality and focus on the things that make you happy rather than rich. Woo!